Hey everybody, Mobile Ranger back here again. So, fresh off the presses, like, came out a minute ago. This is the two, Season 22 Toon Reworks plate. I guess the season is, I will be finished next week with the, the Cosmic Campaign. So, they're actually being a little ahead of schedule for once, which is kind of a nice... I mean, what would really be nice is some actual day and roadmaps, because, like, we haven't had one since... Sorry, I have to go on this tangent. I think we've had one since... I guess it'd be under news. Yeah, this is a faster way of doing it. We haven't had, a, like, a real roadmap since... Yeah. Since March of this year. And it was completed by, uh... Yeah, it was completed by May. It was when the hand came out. And like, the only other things that were in here is War Excalation, which is, you know, bad pain in the ass. The very mild War Chance improvement. <laughs> and the Max Change. And then the, the whatever this is. I don't think that's even been a thing, but the punch in rewards because of the, the, the downscaling thing. And then safes. It's, it's a whole deal. It was a whole deal of safes when they first came out. So annoying. They didn't fix that. I don't think they did. Yeah, probably just on stability. I don't think the game's gotten much better. Especially with war lag, like the the game has it's not gotten better in that regard. Okay, anyways, I'm getting sidetracked. Three works. So, um, you fueled the team's pyramid team, bringing a few balance changes. So, in this land full of loonies, have had many iterations of wannabe Santa characters. This time, set following the Christmas theme, we'll be introducing a year-round theme. Hope that doesn't mean a year-round team. <laughs> if you uh, don't get my epic funny joke, it was that uh, I hope it doesn't take eight, like eight months to finish with the team, like uh, like Nightmare was. But as that comes with its own flavor, the toys. This team will start out with a powerful duo. All right, thank you. The next duo team. This is like one of four. This is just like admitting they don't want to finish things. Because again, like I just mentioned, Nightmare took like an entire year to finish. We still don't have the fourth robot tune. Go Kart still isn't finished. Unless they're announced the next two Go Karts like right now. But the Go Karts aren't finished. They just had the Unlikely Heroes, which are a duo. Uh, the Amok duo. You know, like, is it this? They're just like releasing themes unfinished on purpose, for for whatever reason. I guess it's because they got bored. I don't know. But anyways, as long as that isn't six months from now, they finish it in like January or February. Well, I'm not really gonna care. Well, I guess January would like start like next season. Anyways, this team will be led by the ingenious and totally not evil scheming toy maker Marvin using advanced Martian technology to bring joy and totally not evil machines, we repeat, not evil, to the world of mayhem. Okay, here's a sneak peek of the theme passive as well as toy maker Marvin's leadership skill. So like the same, the same thing uh, the team did before. Okay. Theme passes all toy tunes unlock the self-repair ability. The first time they fall below 40% health. Self-repair can only be used once and heals the tune for 50% max health. It will not end the turn when used, so... I guess a repeat. I wouldn't say a repeat of the mechanic. It's the same mechanic that Anubis Canine's gonna be getting, which they might bring up in this blog post, I have no idea. <laughs> uh, 
Um, yeah. I, th I guess realistically what it was, it was just they were making this mechanic for the toy tunes and be like, oh, this would be a good thing for that one move Anubis Canine has to have. Which, you know, good insight uh, tune dev team. If there's one team on this game, I won't give slack. It's the it's tune team. Like, the art, like, there's always, like, I never have anything to complain about, like, the way they are made, you know, illustrated. Yes. Unless incapacitated, grant all toy team members one of every stat up for two turns. Whenever any tune gains or loses taunt. Okay. So, taunt shenanigans again. Uh, in this season, we're keeping in theme of modernizing prominent tunes that, while veterans of the roster and competitive scheme... Oh, sorry, I didn't read that sentence correctly, sorry. <coughs> in this season, we're keeping in theme of modernizing prominent tunes. While veterans of the roster and competitive scenes... Oh, sorry, yeah, that has skills that are too powerful or inconsistent for you, the player, to work around. Fair enough. So yeah, warm-ups for the same AoE and Toxic Destroyers AoE, which I've heard, I've seen a lot of complaining about, which, you know what, fair enough. <laughs> like, again, I will always bring up this point of... Okay, never mind, I'm actually gonna slack the to a dev team right now. I mean, maybe it's not a it's a general dev team problem, but if they're gonna be adding warm ups to all these AOEs, specifically like not crit AOEs, talk to the to the event designers. Stop having ten thousand of the world's most boring, rep repetitive, boring battles. I combined the two words into a new word were boring. <laughs> but like, don't do that without like accounting for it in the battle scene. Maybe you bring back like an actual version of the difficulty mechanic from to like season two. Because, like, in those events, you just played them all. You know, maybe it adds some sort of, like, level gate to them. So, you know, if you're, like, level 20 to 40, you get one set of campaigns. If you're level 60 to 59, not level 60, sorry, level 41 to 59, you get, you know, a second set. And then, uh, if you're, like, you know, 69 to max, you get a you, know, you get the hard set or whatever. And of course, you still have to scale to some degree, because not everyone has every team built, but... You know, enough where it's never like, oh, this battle isn't interesting for me. You know, I mean, there's plenty of these battles that aren't interesting the other way of you have no chance, but... You know, this hypothetical, hopeful reality of mine that, you know... And keep that in mind. They try to have the game be fun. Anyways. What's doing slight changes to Lunar Toro is the current iteration of the Celestial Display has no upper ceiling. It's problematic in future, as well as adjusting the tenacity for similar reasons. Okay. Additionally, you're working a bunch of tunes, bring them up to speed in the battlefields, future levers on the latter rework section. It's always a reminder these changes may not be final. Okay. So that's the same. Okay, so it's just he doesn't like cleanse the entire rea your reality off. I, mean, I think it'd be nice for posterity's sake. Because if there's one thing I had to complain about with the Lunar team, it's uh. Lunar, Lunar Penelope. Never, ever, 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 ever 
I mean, she ascends fine enough, but she's always like the one to do it last. Like Speedy too. Like it, it's just easier if this was consistent, but it, it's not really necessary. And it cleanses, you know, cleanses sure buffs. It's a fine skill. If it was like you know only stat up or stat downs, I was gonna have a problem. Or you know, the stat up, special setup thing. I'd be like, th this is necessary, especially since you even like give him more bulk. Like if you wanted to kneecap him, but like also give him stats because he's kind of he's kind of chunking right now. You know, I wouldn't care that much. I will say, if you're gonna lower all of these tenacity giving skills for whatever reason, you wanna you wanna like. Fix Warriors Alliance War skill. I know it's a game mode passive, but it's like it's like minus seventy five percent tenacity or something like that's stupid. They get it for free for existing, and it just never goes away. Anyways, so yeah, the the, the cruncher. Uh, I call him Toxic Cruncher for for no reason. Yeah, Toxic Destroyer is still quite the powerful tune able to hold up his ears. It's naturally high attack. See, this I feel makes sense. Like complaining about Toxic Destroyer specifically, I feel like nerfing this makes sense. Now, there's always gonna be two camps on this whole rework debate. Because, I don't know what the because of this is. I don't know, they like not thinking, which is fair. Because it's a fun skill, although that is that is the wrong skill name, by the way. <laughs> so I'm going to copy and paste it from something else. But like, the individual mechanics of this skill, with, like, in addition to the amount of attack he has, it gives you DOT, it silences enemy supports, and the, the team has weakened. Which, you know, that's, like, can slash your debuff instant, like, slash your defense instantly. Yeah, this move just kind of kills you. Which is pretty annoying. Because, like, like, obviously there are teams that beat anti-heroes. But it's just, it's just annoying is what it is. It's like, it's just not fun to play against. <laughs> is this strictly necessary? No. Is this, I don't know. I, I'd argue the, the situations like these that we're getting in is a repercussion of some sort of larger balance philosophy that's going on. I don't know what exactly that it is. We've got complaints. Maybe I'll, I'll write them now and formulate it to a, a big important video. But anyways, this particularly, I, I'm not that upset about. I think it makes sense. Yeah, and then the uh, the this version is that's crazy. Honestly, that's kind of crazy. Like, uh, admittedly, version one to pseudo <laughs> was nutty. Like, it crit, even though it wasn't supposed to. And it triggered whenever any tune died. And it did, like, 11 billion damage. And it didn't have a warm-up. And it was... It gave taunt. And it was really annoying. <laughs> so, like... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's... That's nice. Also, I just thought this is a really long document. But anyways, getting back on on topic. These skills, particularly, I agree with the changes. It's just like the the circumstances, I guess, surrounding them, 
and you know you like viewing Discord feedback channels as much as I do. It's like it's pretty much the only place on the Discord that I go. You, you, you get it. You you understand what I'm talking about. Is that, I guess the the nerf warfare that's going on over there. It's the easiest way of explaining it. And and about a uh, and about dart guns. So anyways, look at it. In this season, we'll be re reworking a couple of old favorite teams, both very requested, as well as completely touching up the Naughty List team as a new member joins them in their contempt for the holiday spirit. So, yeah, Outlaws, well, the team is host to quite a few members. Pretty sure this is true. I looked up on the website, but I don't think the website's filters actually work. Something about this broke. Let's see if I could find it. Oh, no, right, it works again. <laughs> but yeah, but like, oh, they don't want to rework Outlaw Foghorn? Now that's surprising. <laughs> Anyways. Back to misses, yeah. So I'm not doing skill reworks to most members. We are working the very veteran tunes of the team. I hope that means that where are you? I hope that means to you. You kinda suck. As well as bolstering their leader, Hawk with no name, with the major skill rework. So as well no major outstanding changes are being made to his skills. I don't really know what that would qual I don't know what that qualification is. We're prolonging the amount of time a hawk with no name has the high amount of bullets, which increases overall power in the starting turns of Palo. As this does delay the reload activation of Trigger Happy, we're also adjusting a few passive skills to make up for the loss. So he's also getting some stat buffs, which is which is funny because he's a tune from like nine months ago. <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember when his event came out. Yeah, so that just okay. I I agree. Fair enough. They explained it in a way that made sense. <laughs> yeah, most of these skills are the same. Okay, uh, there's an added effect here for uh, whenever he loses an individual bullet, which is nice because before it was to spend three turns to. To burn all your bullets to, to, to gain the sure counter. But yeah. It's more of a passive counter chance, which is nice. Because it's like, I don't know, this team's weird, man. Looking at the outlaws, there's like four mechanics going on with them. It's, it's very strange. You know what? Okay, I actually have to pause on this. I don't know if I've complained of it. Maybe I haven't playing about this before. And they actually didn't change his numbers as much, they just like gave him a lot more attack. I don't really understand I assuming these are what I've referred to as the base stat totals, but I don't know how to get them per se. Like if I go in here and click on Yosemite Sam. Or let's actually Talk with no names right there. Let's do him. Like if I sent him to, to level one, tune up one, four stars, because that's his unlock. If I do this, these stats don't even remotely add up. I, I take away the core boost too, and they get even lower. And it's like. So what are these numbers based off of? Because if I do like just max level or something, which would be a weird qualification, then they shoot up to way past. The speed is correct. But the rest of the numbers aren't. And like the 10%, yeah, the 2% global speed bonus isn't 
you know, affect these. So it's like, you know, bring it down to, to like 49, you know, original max. If I could actually click 49, those numbers aren't accurate either. I, I don't get them. I don't get it. What are these numbers based off of? If, if anyone in the comments knows, please explain this to me. Uh, yeah, there's just a one bullet loss on that one. Yeah, one bullet loss on that one. Okay, the passes got better, question mark. Yeah, that one's a team member. This one's now a team member. Flicks it and moves that down. Which is neat. I don't know why it didn't count himself. It's, it's strange. Okay, removed healing effect, added piercing buff. Okay. Sure. This part of the skill, a little useless. But this is a little confusing to me. Like, they are, they are literally a crit team. Why, why do they have piercing? Like, I get, there's probably reasons why. A lot of these teams will have crit and piercing. You know, it's probably the effect of something like, you know, 400 health, like, like 40k health defenders. But it's like, if the rest of the team dies so easily that they need to add these warm-ups to regular AoEs, that the like a hundred percent of a tunes attacks that, which is only like again, I make these actual numbers. Like I for this tune would be at most doing like six thousand. And he himself has like you know, that'd be like half of his health. And they have, like, I swear to God, I swear to God, I talk about this every video, and it just doesn't matter. I talk about it every video. They are going nuts with this mechanic. I guess I don't know why I'm complaining. It's, like, technically a good thing. It's, like, an extra skill to have. But at the same time, like, it's, I don't know, it's, Put this in like the legendary skill or something. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> like I think he's making the team better. Uh oh wow, would be he's the one extra counter chance. Why is this team a defense team? Like first of all, they're literally a hidden team. Bring like Samurai Sam or the Nightmares, and it'll just perish instantly. <laughs> I mean, this is nice. They actually get counter chance. Probably could have just given a better rework for Yosemite, but I'll just not worry about it. I mean, this does mean they're getting piercing for counter chance and also crit damage for counter chance. Like, okay, it's an actual mechanic for the team now. Even if it is a very strange inclusion. But it's like, they are obsessed with giving every team in this game a theme passive. And like, they'll change leadership skills to just be like, strange. Like, this is just a regular passive. Okay, back in my good hearty American days of Starfare and Marvin. I'll find him. Back in my hearty American days, Starfare and Marvin. They were important, damn it. I mean, you know, Starfare and Marvin is a great example. But, you know, they felt important. Now, there's, there's another piece of the puzzle. I don't think that metaphor makes much sense.
But okay, yeah. Th this this skill with three cooldown, absolute nonsense. Even the debuffs are only for two turns. Right, so it's a theme passive. What? What the hell's wrong with them? Oh, wait, sorry, they gave an actual attack stat to you. 70. <laughs> I was about to say, where's the buff to the AOA? And though it. I mean, he has actual stats now, which is cool, but like. I'd give the man the nuke. He's just 70 Sam. Like, I, just, I don't care. I guess in practice it'll probably be fine. Yeah, Viki gets to, like, participate. Well, he's. He, he still hasn't been sourced very well. Like, it's quite frankly shocking that I even have him. Buff style loss of Esther! Never mind! I lied! <laughs> they did buff out loss of Esther. Alright. I don't have to care. I have a real, real support at Law Sylvester. Yeah, defense down. Heal over time. Who ain't gains turn meter? That doesn't gain hidden. Is there a way to gain hidden? Doesn't look like. Okay, sorry. Never mind. He has a way to gain hidden. That's awesome. <sighs> Well, I mean, okay, realistically, like, you're using the team's only defender to give him hidden, but, like, it's a horror thing. Like, again, I, I have to, to bring this up. You know what? Actually, ooh, I scrolled too far. Not even thinking on it. Looking at this, I'm putting the pieces together of what, what my issue is. So you know what? I'll save it for the the, the big video. But anyways, well, above fifty percent max health is like bonus. Yeah, so this is just adding the a way for him to get hidden. Sort of like uh, Vampire Ralph got a way to revive. <laughs> I should not. Yeah. And here's Outlaw Foghorn. I guess I didn't even read these, really. And the taunts, you know, when he damages enemy with taunt, he heals the team. So, you know, useful effect. And essentially, like, when an enemy gains taunt, well, I guess it won't work if he's incapacitated. But, you know, practically, it's when an enemy gains taunt, you just heal 20% max health. I mean, it wouldn't be a tool in the the, the real uh, Giga Chad, as the, as the kids say. The real Giga Chad outlaw mirror. <laughs> oh, wow. I mean, he didn't get that much faster, but he got an outlaw foghorn got way faster. <laughs> this guy sucked before. Anyways. So, yeah. Gets two attack up. She is an attacker, I think. If I remember correctly. I guess I could just look at it. <gasps> One less turn of deny, dodge, and counter? You wouldn't. <laughs> oh, he... I forgot. Well, I wouldn't forget. I've literally never used... That law foghorn. But he gives counter chance. The more you know. And the abilities don't warm up more. Yippee! Alright, and here we go. The professionals, baby. Now, here's a real team. Here's a real team. Screw you. Go to hell, outlaws. We made good teams in my house. Anyways. The professionals are a team that came alongside new mechanics and at their time, which I mean, this is sturdy, by the way. It's this meant sturdy. You know, if you're if you're World of Mayhem historian like me, you know. 
They add sturdy. Okay, I'm not gonna read ahead. Oh, no reading ahead. No complaining about the thing again. And at their time, it truly lived up to their name. As the tunes evolved and combat became more complex, I have to assign an asterisk on that one. They seem to have lost some of their ability to deal with a variety of enemies. This is true. So we're doing major reworks to the entire core team to restore them as a solid all-around option. Okay. I like alt-rounders. You know, that's why, uh... What's it called? Masterminds. That's why masterminds are fun. Good on offense, good on defense. As Aristos are kind of like that, too. Although, you wouldn't keep them for war or offense, that's all I'm saying. They're, they're like in my mind they're a defensive team they just happen to work on the offense a lot of the time but was, maybe uh, maybe that's like a symptom of bad sign but, but you know don't blame me blame the guy that, that decided to make them steal make countess steal attack up instead of defense up so yeah reverse the core team as well as a good counter pick in a few scenarios I mean they have stun so, there's already a fair amount of things they probably should beat, i.e. counter and dodge teams. Uh, since we're propping up the team, we also decided to give a bit of a bump up to the non-core team members as well, mostly because sales duck Daffy sold us on it. Uh, amen, I will say, that the two of these, uh... These combos are reworks to like all professionals and all outlaws. Um, it's really helping out the the common challenge in uh, I guess technically the daily challenges too. I was thinking more of the wacky invasion format. Uh, you know, with that one day that has the dailies, not not the dailies, the you know the commons and rares. Yeah, the common one is always a pain in the ass. So, so this should be uh, this should be pretty helpful having these ones reworked. So, yeah, while we are lowering some damage modifiers, they should now be able to stack damage very high. Sorry, they should be able, now be able to stack a very high amount of stat bonuses by accumulating forming a signature mechanic, the bricks, which is being shifted into their own theme pass. Yeah, this is neat. Now, it was a little strange. That was a mechanic that only came into play if you had Foreman Foghorn. I guess this is kind of just how the kits were designed back then. I mean, again, I'm going to add this to the unexistent tally of teams with the theme passive. It's like they came up with it for the vintage team. They're like, wow, this team kind of sucks, to be honest. But this is the best idea we've ever had, using a friendship slot to just add a new skill. Let's go just do it to everybody. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Real stats, again, I don't understand these, so I just don't look at them. I mean, there's a lot more bulk, that's like 30% more bulk, if I, you know, if I'm not using a calculator. Yeah. So that's the leadership, question mark, I don't know, these skills aren't labeled. Oh, that was a passive, but th this was the effects of the leadership skill. Oh, he stuns the target enemy first. Now, this is practical. The normal incapacitated clause. So it has, a, it has a floor of defense down, but it doesn't give two defense down per brick. Arr, arr, I'm so upset. Arr. No, I'm just kidding. I don't really care that much. <laughs> I know this team built. I don't know. I was talking pros like they're the best team of all time before. Maybe this was. The, I don't actually remember this. Yeah. The man's like 50% passives. So this one, I don't know. Maybe it was this one. Let's pretend it was this one. Uh, let's 
Western Institute Department. Yeah. So this was the. Uh, actually, I don't know what this one. No, this is a new effect. I'm pretty sure. It was these tunes turns. Cleanse an attack down for each team member. For each attack down cleansed, randomly inflicted a fence down on the enemy team. Wait. Cool, I guess. That like. In a solitary attack down? I got cleansing. All attack down sounds a little much, but it's one very specific debuff. Ah, this, it feels weird. I guess the best way I could explain it is normally I feel like a skill, because I've, I've occasionally done, you know, like reworks or. Yeah, new new tunes for fun. You know, fan kits and all that. And the one thing I always tried to do was like passive skills, essentially, because there's only so many like levels you work with your tune-ups. You know, there's a fixed thirty, which is why they're doing things like theme passives, as well as uh, yeah, this is. A game of passive. That's why like things like that exist, because it's like they get to assign them for free, basically. Like they get that ha have an extra skill, which I'm gonna put in quotation marks, without taking up extra tune-up levels. Because I guess they forgot how to program numbers that weren't six. But besides the point, well, it isn't really besides the point. Well, yeah, it's one of my filibuster terms. Anyways, the point of that thing is this feels like one effect, power wise, if that makes sense. Like, if I were doing this, this would be like one thing, and then there'd be like professional team members with sturdy have. 15% piercing or whatever, yeah, you know, something like that. A little something to make the skill feel like it has that oomph. I don't know, maybe this is part of the other video I've been talking about this whole time. Because this is already like a 40 minute video, let's not, let's not drag this along. So, Lion's Horror skill. Yeah, the bricks move down here. I mean, they get a turn meter now, which is nice. And the bricks also grant defense. So that's cool. So yeah, ensuring the fires are kept up and making fireman bugs more consistent, also change the order of certain effects to be able to be able to enable his team some counterplay against specific teams. Okay, cool. So it removes the setups before it has a warm up. Oh, this guy had a three turn cooldown. I didn't even notice. And I guess it does stuff the rest of the time it's on cooldown, but. Like, I'd argue this is very specific. I wouldn't say this is specific, but like, it works every time. Like, at the end of his, his the turn after, he uses the skill used on him, he won't attack again. Eh? Yeah. You know, it's like. It's really necessary. I guess what they're doing is future proofing, because it's technically what they could always do is like buff it in future if they need to, like they did for baseball. But I guess what I'm trying to say. That's what I'm trying to say, is people hate things being nerfed more than being buffed. Like, who's going to complain something got buffed? I mean, unless in the context of it should have gotten a nerf. But, 
everything off the table. It's easier to, I guess what I'm trying to say is, it's easier to underball a change than to overball or overtune. But I feel like there's a degree of, look on this on paper, maybe that warm up isn't so necessary. I would say I get like trying to let the meta settle, but you're reworking things every season. I don't know if that's really going to be the case here until you get around to like most teams. <laughs> you know, then we can start evaluating. Did you know the outlaw changes do what we wanted them to? Anyways. I have to give this a question. It's immune to silence because before immunity acted as 100% resistance. But now he's just immune. So is that like the same thing as the R&D absolute immunity? I agree this would make more sense. Uh, but you've decided not to phrase things this way. So I'm a little confused. I mean, I didn't even look at this skill. Okay, he, he removes some attack ups on his own. Very, very nice. Uh, there's like a once per enemy per turn. I guess I'm trying to think about this. This is the same clause Starfire Daffy has, right? Like it doesn't, yeah, okay, never mind. I'm, I'm looking at this like it was some sort of unnecessary nerf. It literally does not matter. I don't know how they gain attack up more than four attack up twice in the same turn. That seems quantum, because if they just gain like eight attack up, the skill triggers. But uh, I, guess, I guess for posterity's sake, maybe, maybe there's a tune that takes two turns for one turn. <laughs> it makes sense. Then again, I just said two turns in one turn, so I don't think it does make sense. But, okay, so there's no cooldown in Lion's War, so it's cool. I mean, also it does less damage, so, yeah. Oh, four defense downs feel better than four defense downs did before. Yes, and there's the same skill again. He also gains 30. That makes me curious about the Alliance Force theme. Would he like stack 30 with Foghorn's passive? Anyways, Dr. Kilpatient at a second go is a very questionable medical school to try and improve his role as a hero. Why not swap his role around as an awesome offensive and utility support as a healer? And we'll improving his case capabilities all around. Okay. Yeah. The incapacitate clause on that. Uh, mm hmm. Cleanser and debuff. Okay. I, I guess it's fine. They're on the same scale, I mean. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Okay, so this skill's still a little weird. Uh, again, not necessarily a complaint. Petunia skill kind of does something like this. I feel maybe a logical approach would be heal the whole team for 50%, then do this, but additional heal's an additional heal, I guess, even if it's only for him. Like, you didn't really make this skill better at heal. Excuse me. Make this skill better at healing people. I feel a little silly that, uh, you know, maybe. Depends at the time. I'm trying to look for him. 
because he was a professional. Okay, I, I don't care. This Tony works here. <laughs> Fun that I'm getting at is someone like Rabbit, not Rabbit Bugs, Barber Bugs, would be better at healing than him. That'd be a, you know a bit of a lull. Don't even use him. But I guess this is a tax that doesn't suck anymore, so maybe it'll be fine. Okay, stun target enemy. Oh, it doesn't flip sure buffs anymore. SMH. <laughs> oh, against turn reader. Okay, yeah, he has the incapacitate claws on that part, but then he has business as usual, like, I don't even really talk about him. Ah, I see, he's returned to being the human fridge. <laughs> okay, I mean, that does a little less damage. You probably could have given him sure counter. Actually, sure counter on him would have gone a long way. But yeah, okay. I mean, this is less of a cool now, which is actually pretty important. Him being able to stun, as well as turn back turn meter is pretty good. Yeah, okay, this has more of an effect. I mean, 30% defense and debuff resistance. Yeah, okay, man. It, it's still 16 turn meter. It's still 16% turn meter. It, it bothers me. I don't know why, but it, it bothers me a lot. <laughs> Well, okay. Well, whatever. Yeah, okay, they actually didn't change them that, that much. Yeah, Ralph Wolf it's better with the foreman, I guess. Uh, I'm, you know, honestly, I'm kind of curious to see how this team will play out after these reworks. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll try them out. I mean, but again, I, I think the same thing of Divine. Yeah, maybe I just need to blow my like eighty k special stuff building up eight different or four different teams. Yeah, that, then at that rate, I can do a real tier list. Okay, cooldown reduction on this. Then I had a three cooldown. And it says there's a lot of these tunes that I I don't use. Yeah, what do you think written up got changed? Oh, the whole team is... Attack. Wait, no, that's not different. Oh, if he's hidden, he heals the whole team. What's the... <laughs> okay, I'm actually very curious on the three attacker lineup. <laughs> Seems pretty funny. I mean... I guess Ralph Wolf doesn't stun. Which is kind of important for them. I have stat buffs for Concierge. Concierge is a professional. I thought he was a staff team. Interesting. I mean, I'd put him on the staff team, but... I mean, Mail Runner didn't get buffed. Mail Runner, I guess Mail Runner's alright. Sales Stuck Daffy. Uh, oh, Ghost of Christmas Tats. Right, I forgot about the, the whole Naughty List thing. They had Behumduck Daffy. That's what I would do. Okay. Oh, they removed this effect. Why? I mean, it's a weird effect. It doesn't really make sense, but... I wouldn't say... Yeah, I wouldn't say it's, it's particularly necessary. I mean, this skill got a little better. Because now the whole team gets the extra crit damage, which is very nice. And again, the immunity thing. Are they interchangeable or are they not? I'm fine if they aren't. It makes more sense if they aren't. But you didn't explain this. This this is the reworked blog post. I'm going mental. I didn't notice. It's right here. It's in the goddamn team passive. It's literally the same thing. I mean, okay, this gets turn meter. 
but they just took an effect out of one of his skills and said, it, here it is for everybody, even though it's literally not changed. You're literally adding them for fun. You're adding them for fun. <sighs> okay. That's that for your turns. Okay. Coolio. Lit like, literally, you could have done this. You could have just added this to that skill. No. They made it a theme passive literally for fun. Just because... They, they looked at it and said, we could make this a steam massive if we wanted to. And then they did. I don't mind the new teams having them. I don't mind giving them to old teams that need them. That is unnecessary. That is the most clear-cut example of my problem. I can, I can know it. Ugh. Okay. Anyways. Uh, that changes with Krampus. <laughs> I think they failed trying to get a little fancy with the the effects here. Okay. Silence target enemy for two turns and freeze. Okay, so freeze seems to be becoming more important for the team rather than just like an extra effect. Christmas Taz has for no reason. Or, I mean, not for no reason, for funsies. Uh, silence, freeze, the enemy hides a tiny taunt, five defense up. Yeah. Oh, right, I forgot about this skill. <laughs> I was about to say, wait, I just realized that's, that's five turns, that's one turn. Yeah, it's read silence to frozen enemy. Increase the duration of the taunt by one turn. Okay, so that's roughly the same. I mean, it freezes now. He gains more defense. Well, I guess he doesn't really gain more defense up. Because, like, your entire team was silenced before. Uh, then, yeah, he would gain, you know, 12, right? No. Yes, yes. It would be 12. It would be 12 defense up, which is a lot of defense up. But yeah, with the combo of this skill, I mean, he'll have seven defense up for two turns. <laughs> well, no, he won't. But I mean, let's just yeah, this skill used to be for the rest of the battle. Which is another thing I haven't commented on, the lack of stacking buffs, but... Yeah. Okay, that's roughly the same. Yeah, Gotham. Or, wait, he didn't even get a stat change. Really? Okay. Well, I guess I know who's getting replaced. Which, like, t t fair enough, I guess. Okay, and then the end of this. Yeah. I think were the things from the last blog post. Yeah. Okay, it is. Anyways, this is like a 50 minute video. I think I'm gonna have to edit this. Yeah, so I'll, I'll keep the... I'll cut the complaining bits. I wouldn't say the... Yeah, not the complaining bits. I'm the mobile rager. It wouldn't, I wouldn't be the mobile rager if I wasn't ranting. But anyways, there, there's some com complaining bits. I, I think I'll just edit those as part of the... the big video. I say the big video. Maybe I'll just make it two videos. But anyways, I'm Wilbur Rager signing off. It's like 2 a.m. for me. <laughs> uh, that's all, folks. Good night, everybody. Wrong show.